I cannot believe we are here back doing more one quarterback dynasty content. We love There's it. a community out there of you guys who are just too stubborn to switch from Superflex, and we love you. So what we're going to do for you today is do another one quarterback rookie 2023 mock draft. Come on, talk it we're up. We're going to go back and forth. We're going to use landing spots. We're going to tell you why we're going to take these players in certain positions. Do us a favor. Drop a like to show some support. Come if on. you guys want more quarterback content, this video needs to blow up. So, one quarterback, uh, yeah. Because <laughs> because we like Superflex content, but we're gonna we're trying to help out that uh, that part of the community. Yeah. Don't be afraid to switch. Don't be afraid. Um, go ahead, drop a like, subscribe if you like Dynasty content, and comment down below what's a rookie this year that you feel is being disrespected, and how long you've been playing in one quarterback leagues and why you won't switch. Yep. Okay, here we go. I'm going to give you the first overall pick, Badaki. Okay. What are you doing here at the 101? And we all know what it is. Let's not spend too much time on on it. It's B. John Robinson. But in this scenario, he goes to the Cincinnati Bengals, uh, which is very interesting. That means Joe Mixon, I'm assuming, is no longer there. Joe yeah. Burrow, B. John, Jamar Chase, T. Higgins. Hopefully he stays. T. I mean, Wow. What a team and what a, a crazy, crazy scenario this would be if Bijan does go to the Cincinnati Bengals. Yeah, we don't need to spend too much time on that, but that would be very exciting. And you and I would both assume that Bijan is, or Joe Mixon's gone. It's gone. So this, yes. this is a fun landing spot, mm -hmm. which some people out there have commented and said, Joe Mixon's going to leave. We'll, we'll, we'll see. In this scenario, it suits that narrative. Yep. All right, at the 102, I'm still going to go with JSN, I'm going to go Jackson Smith and Jigba. In this draft, he was drafted to the Giants at the end of the first round, pick 25. So he gets that first round draft capital, lands in a good spot with the Giants, instantly becomes their number one target. I don't need to overthink this. I've said it before. I'll say it again. Two can't miss prospects in this year's class, B. John Robinson, Jackson Smith, and Jigba. So I'll take him here at the one, two, and feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. Um... I'll take my guy. I don't love the landing spot, but I think you kind of got to go best player available here, and that's Quentin Johnston. He does go to the Minnesota Vikings. Once again, okay. don't love the landing spot. It just doesn't make sense getting Quentin and Justin Jefferson there. You're kind of looking more for a complimentary wide receiver where Quentin, you know, you hope that he can be a alpha wide receiver. That's my hope and expectations. So having two alphas on one team, I think, can kind of make it a little bit shaky. Um, yeah. So... I'll still take best player available here in Quinton, but don't love the landing spot. Yeah, that's an interesting spot. I actually I actually don't hate it because we've talked about how Quinton can operate in the slot. Yeah, yeah, we um, have. How he's interesting after the catch. So that's that's intriguing. It'll just be interesting sure. to have like a 6'4 guy consistently in the slot, <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah, like... well, he probably will play outside as well. Yeah. All right, here at the 104, I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs, who he's probably my 103 in this scenario. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. He goes to the Eagles at the end of the first round. So I'll take him here. I'm in this scenario. There's no way you're re-signing Miles Sanders. I'm sorry, Miles Sanders owners. But if you draft the running back in the first round, you're going to let the other running back go ahead and walk in free agency. So I'm going to take Jameer Gibbs at the 104. It's a very realistic possibility, in my opinion, that the Eagles do move on from Miles Sanders when you consider how many players they need to re-sign. And how few amount of teams who have signed running backs to long-term deals actually make the Super Bowl. Like, those numbers are very interesting, and I think yeah. that they're a smart team over there. So, mm -hmm. Jameer Gibbs here, I'll take him. He goes to the Eagles. I like the spot. And what Miles Sanders did, but I think he can offer you even more through the year. Uh, R.I.P. Kenny Gainwell. I'll take him here at the 104. R.I.P. Kenny. Okay. Um, I'm looking at a wide receiver. I'm also looking at another running back. Okay. And I think I'm going to go running back. Let's go running back, back to back here. I'm going to do Zach Charbonnet. He goes to the oh. Miami Dolphins in the second round. I like that. Love the draft capital. Love the landing spot. Love what he can do over there. Um, and he's a big body guy, you know. So yeah. he's going to be he's going to be pounding the rock and getting in between the tackles, and that's exactly what you need for someone like a a Tua. And he can block. So yeah, I like that. No, Which they need. I I think I I probably am still going to go wide receiver ahead of Charbonnet, but I love the landing spot. It's a mm -hmm. perfect landing spot. We love the running back. He's my RB3. I think he's your RB4, if I'm not mistaken. Yep. So we're both big fans of 
Zach Charbonnet. He just feels like a very complete running back. Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. it was cool to see what he did through the year this um, this year. But there's still a first round wide receiver on the board. Yeah. Jordan Addison. Mm -hmm. And Jordan Addison goes to the Texans at pick 12. So I feel like we got it. To, I don't know. Just my personal opinion, best player I available. I feel like the best player available there is Jordan Addison. Goes to the Texans and he links up with Bryce Young. So he's instantly, instantly mm. going to become Bryce Young's wide receiver one on that team. That might have been I, an oversight for me. I I, compl- I thought Jordan Addison went to a different team. Mm. But it's all yeah, good. Well, still, good cause still, still a good um, pick there. Yeah, there could be people who are running back needy and they go Charbonnet. But mm-hmm. I think for me... Again, best player available is what I typically do. I think Addison is that best player available. Now, we think he's best suited as a really, two. really elite wide receiver, too, like your Devonta Smiths of the world. Mm-hmm. But in this scenario, he steps into wide receiver one target share. So he could be even more valuable than Charbonnet, than Gibbs, than Johnston to end the season. So yeah. I'll take him there at the 106. That feels like the steal of the draft so far for me. There is another wide receiver in the first round that has went. As well, yep. and I'll take him. You know, I think I like the landing spot. My expectation that's Dave Flowers. He goes to the Baltimore Ravens here okay. um, with the twenty second pick for the Ravens. I like. The, I think the landing spot's decent. It's a good complimentary wide receiver for uh, Rashad Bateman. That is with the expectations of Lamar Jackson staying. Also, they get yep. a new head, uh, new offensive coordinator. So I, I don't mind this landing spot for Zay and what he can do. A, not a good slot guy there. Yeah. In a super flex league, I already have Zay on the border of being a first round pick. Mm-hmm. And in a one quarterback format, if he gets first round draft capital, you can't not take him around this area. No doubt. He definitely needs to be considered in this area. I like the player. Then the draft capital also lines up. Yeah, you, you definitely have to start to consider him there. Mm-hmm. All right. So Zay Flowers is off the board. My next Best player in my rankings would be Kayshawn Boutte. Kayshawn but Boutte Booty. didn't go until the third round. And he also went to the Broncos, which I don't love. However, he is the next best player available in my rankings. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna uh I'm gonna wait on Boutte here. I'm gonna go Michael Mayer next. Michael Mayer at the 108. He yep. goes in the first round. I like that draft capital a little bit better. And Michael Mayer and Boutte are in a very similar tier for me uh, in this one quarterback format. So I'm going to go Michael Mayer at the 108. He gets drafted to the Commanders. The Commanders need a tight end. They need somebody. I like Logan Thomas, but obviously not the answer, not the not the uh, guy who's going to be there for the rest of you know this, this Ron Rivera era. So let's get Michael Mayer and he can instantly help the run game, which I know they want to establish there because he's a fantastic blocker and he can instantly become a check down option for Sam Howell or whoever's going to be the quarterback there. So I like Mayer here at the one eight and it's not, we're not even doing a tight end premium league and I'll take him this early. No. Yeah. I, I love it. And that's kind of where my thought process was. If you weren't going to take Mayer there, that's, I was going there at the one nine. Okay. I'll go with my other wide receiver based off my rankings. Yeah, I'm, I agree with you. It is Kayshawn Booty Booty, but I'm going to go Josh Downs. He goes in the second round to the Tennessee Titans. Okay. Um, which makes sense. You know, a guy that can complement Traylon Burks could be the slot wide receiver there. Uh, and he, he can be a guy that kind of takes over that Roberto Woods role. And he can kind of step up and, and be something. So I like this landing spot for Josh Downs. Yeah. Just got to hope the quarterback plays just a little bit better, you know. And I think they're also straying away from that run game. They might part ways with Derrick Henry and whether it's this year, maybe even next year, could I be think a change he, of offensive identity. Yeah, exactly. So I'm excited to see where Josh downs, what he can do. All right. Josh downs off the board. You're higher on downs, So I don't think that's, I don't even think that's a reach for you to do that. Cause you, you are a big fan of downs mm-hmm. and you like the draft capital. So it, yep. that, that makes sense. I'm going to go running back here. There's a running back that I love that has had a ton of controversy on this channel and in the dynasty community as a whole, but he gets drafted to the Dallas Cowboys. Oh boy. In the third round. Oh boy. I'm saying Zach Evans at the 110, and you could make a case in my opinion for Zach Evans at the 108 onwards. I, I think, mm. I mean, who knows what they do with Zeke again. We talked earlier about teams who spend a lot of money on the running back position and how they just don't ever make the Super Bowl. The Cowboys spend 
top five money on the running back position. Are they really going to franchise tag Tony Pollard and have Zeke on for top five money? Are they going to spend like 25% of their total cap on the running back position? <laughs> I think they have to learn their lesson eventually. And I think Zeke's probably moving on in this scenario. If you draft Evans in the third round and we don't know what happens with Tony Pollard, but at minimum, I think Evans takes the first and second down roll there in, in, in uh, cowboy town. Cowboy Town. Jerry Land. And uh, I'll take him here at the 110. I think that's a great spot. I love I love envisioning what that could do for him. No, yeah, I definitely like the I like the landing spot. Um it's gonna be interesting to see what can happen. All right, yeah. one eleven here for me. Mm-hmm. Looking at the wide receiver room, looking at the next best player available, and I think you kind of know where I'm going here. I think that's Xavier Hutchinson. He goes to the Kansas City Chiefs. In round three. You're going Xavier over Boutte. Over Boutte, yes. In this scenario, I am going him over Boutte. I like the landing spot a lot better. I like that he's going to get in with Patrick Mahomes, two-time Super Bowl champion, by the way. Oh, come Patrick on, we've Mahomes. gone through this. We've gone through this before. That is, <laughs> I don't know, man. Come on. This, this we've feel, done this This, this feels a little before. bit more comfortable, in my opinion. And, you know, with the expert. What Juju did in the Super Bowl in the second half, that's what Xavier Hutchinson can do. On on a yeah. larger scale, I might it may be unrealistic, but that's kind of the workload and the process of what I can see Xavier Hutchinson doing. Okay. So if they don't go with Juju, Xavier Hutchinson right here. I just I cannot take Xavier over Keishon Boutte. Boutte, I'll take him here at the one twelve. That's fair. I I have been Xavier Hutchinson's biggest mm-hmm. advocate, but I cannot take Xavier Hutchinson over Keishon Boutte, especially when they go in the same round. I, I like Boutte's overall talent much more. He goes to the Broncos. So I don't know, man. I'm I'm best player available type of guy. No, I feel like fair. we have done this dance with with, <laughs> with the Chiefs before. Chief and and I just For it's sure. just not part of my process. So I'll take mm-hmm. Boutte there at the one twelve. No, definitely definitely get what you're saying. All right, I'm at the turn, right? Mm-hmm. You got the two oh one. I'm at here. the two oh one. I'm actually gonna go wide receiver. And he has went to a team that once again, it's not, it is not best play available. It's more of like, okay, he landed on a good team. He has first round draft capital. He went significantly later than in our first one quarterback mock. That's Jalen Hyatt to the Buffalo bills in the first okay. round in the two Oh one. This could be the complimentary guy potentially that maybe Josh Allen is looking for for Stephon Diggs. But at the same time, we see that Gabe Davis role where it's like, okay, can he really truly be that guy? So I'm still taking the first round draft capital. I think a lot of people would probably take him in this first round over some of these guys potentially with the draft capital. But uh, let's give him the respect yeah. here. Uh, I'll let you take Jalen Hyatt wherever you want. <laughs> um, I don't understand, man. How is Sean Tucker still on the board? I don't mm-hmm. get it. Mm-hmm. I'll take Sean Tucker here at the 201 or 202, excuse me. He goes to the Bears. Now, draft capital, maybe that's why he's still on the board. He goes in the fourth round, but he is the first pick in the fourth round to the Chicago Bears. I have been someone who has been openly saying that I think Monty is moving on. So you have Sean Tucker and you have Khalil Herbert. I think Tucker probably becomes the RB1 there. And that's kind of the ideal spot that you, Bidaki, have been looking for. I don't know. I feel like Tucker should shouldn't be on the board still. I think I think that's no a steal for me. I get I get what you're saying. I mean, I guess in in this scenario, I'm going with the draft capital. I'm going with that okay. that that Fair. thought process here. So I yeah, you know, it's just just different, just different with these okay. landing spots. I do like the landing spot. I'm not saying Sean Tucker is not. I don't like it. But fourth round, you know, maybe I feel like that is like your ideal scenario for all the Tucker believers out there. Which I know you're one of them. So yeah. I'm I mean, I'm still believing in the higher a higher draft capital, but yeah, the the landing sure. spot is ideal for sure. Completely. Landing spot's ideal, draft capital not but. not ideal, but okay. completely completely agree where you're at because that kind of makes me feel like well maybe they'll maybe they'll roll with Khalil, you know mm-hmm. maybe they'll roll with Khalil over Sean Tucker, but anyways still maybe still, I mean Khalil himself does not have higher draft capital than Sean Tucker coming in, so no, I believe I, Khalil agreed. was like a sixth round pick, seventh round pick. So mm. all right, my next guy that I am going to be taking here is actually a tight end. Like the yeah. landing spot, like, like the this. draft capital. He goes to the Los Angeles Chargers, and that's Luke Musgrave here. So once oh. 
Yeah. Okay. Luke Musgrave, he goes to the Los Angeles Chargers. I like where he is. I like where he went once again. You know, Gerald Everett kind of moving on. I kind of like the the mobility and the thought process of how Luke can be utilized in this in this offense. And they didn't get a first. They didn't get a first round of wide receiver here uh, for these for the Chargers. So they okay. go they go with the tight end. And I feel really comfortable there. Not where I thought you were going because mm-hmm. there's a first round tight end still on the board. Mm-hmm. That is Dalton Kincaid. He goes in the first round to the Jaguars. So. Is that an oversight? No. Or are you still going Musgrave over Kincaid? I like Kincaid I like Musgrave. O- I like Musgrave over Kincaid. Yes, it is first round draft capital. But I mean, you know, in this scenario, you're probably thinking Evan Ingram, is he staying? You know, uh, in this scenario, if they draft the tight end in the first round, I don't think Evan Ingram's returning. Yeah. So I still I still like the thought process of Luke Musgrave going to the Chargers over the Jags, in my personal opinion. Okay. Versus Dalton Kincaid. Well, I'll take Kincaid there. I I would have Kincaid significantly higher than Musgrave personally, but okay. I can respect the opinion for sure. At the two oh five, I think this is kind of where yes, it is one one quarterback, but I think this is where I'll be okay to take a quarterback okay. here. And that obviously my QB one in this scenario, it is CJ Stroud. I love the landing spot with the Carolina Panthers. So I'll take him here at the two oh five. You know, you you're getting DJ Morris. Uh DJ Moore, CJ, you know, a new head coach. What's going to be happening? Who else do they bring in? You know, so I, I really like this thought process here. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not going quarterback yet, but I can respect where you're coming from. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm going to keep taking a shot on some of these running backs, and the next running back I would take a shot on would probably be Tank Bigsby here at the 206. Tank Bigsby goes to the Baltimore Ravens. I really like picturing what he could do in that offense. I've actually talked about Tank Bigsby being an option for them as a compliment for J.K. Dobbins. Mm-hmm. So I think he could complement uh, that backfield really well. It's a run-focused team, and J.K. Dobbins is probably RB1, but there's a scenario in which Tank Bigsby takes a lot of work on the goal line. So I'll take Tank Bigsby there. He gets drafted to the Ravens in the third round. No, that's fair. That completely makes sense. All right, my next guy is a wide receiver, second-round draft capital. I'll take R- Rishi Rice. Richie Rice, Richie Rice. Okay. <laughs> he goes to the New Orleans Saints in the second round. Big body guy. I guess he kind of takes over that Mike um, Michael Thomas role with a lobby maybe in the slot, whatever the case may be. So I, I like I like this landing spot for. Well, actually, Rasheed Rice did not measure the way that we thought he would, mm-hmm. but I think Rice could complement Olave really, really well. Agreed. So I like it. All right. I think I'm going to go Israel Abani Kanda next. Again, I'm going to keep smashing these running backs and take a shot on them. Abani Kanda goes to the Texans in round four, so very similar to where Damian Pierce went. He goes with the second pick in the fourth round. Mm-hmm. And I think, I mean, personally, I like Abani Kanda a little bit more as a prospect. I know some people won't like that I'm saying that, but at minimum, I think they could complement each other really well, and Abani Kanda could be like their home run hitter in that backfield. So I'll take a shot on Abani Kanda and just see what happens uh, no. moving forward. Yeah, makes sense, makes sense. All right, my next guy would be Parker Washington. Third round capital goes to the Raiders here. I like this thought process. He kind of takes over that Hunter Renfro role. You know, maybe he kind of could be a good complimentary guy with Devontae Adams, who's going to be the quarterback. In this scenario, we we can kind of talk about that quarterback a little bit later. I don't know if you're going quarterback here yet, but not yet. No. Okay. Okay. I'm not going to go quarterback yet. I'm going to go Devin A. Chain mm-hmm. here at the two uh two ten. He goes to the Lions in the third round. Um, you know, again, just trying to hit on running backs, trying to find the needle in the haystack here at the end of the second round. One quarterback format. Maybe you can make a case for a quarterback here, but mm-hmm. uh, I still like some of the some of the positional options that are on the board to me. OK, well, I mean, I guess I'll take the next quarterback. That will be Bryce Young at the two two eleven here. I think that's a little bit. I think you're going to have to get one of these running back or these quarterbacks here in some okay. of these areas. You know, I mean, I feel more confident sure. taking from the two five onwards a quarterback at any time so i mean yeah i to to each their own and you know in a one quarterback format i'm just thinking every i mean there's there's 32 teams in the nfl you're Mm -hmm. playing probably in a 12-man league if you don't have a quarterback that you can start you know like i I feel like people are probably focusing on other positions for sure for sure surely you have a quarterback that you can start there's only only 12 that you need out of out of 32 teams so right that's just my where i'm coming from however I've heard someone say this before, and I kind of tend to agree with them. If I am taking a quarterback, 
at like the 205 onwards, I actually think it's Anthony Richardson. And I'll take Anthony Richardson at the 212. Okay. Because I feel like in a one quarterback format, you don't really, it's not that you don't need to hit, but there is less risk in not hitting on a quarterback. So you might as well shoot for the stars and try and find the absolute ceiling with a guy like Anthony Richardson, uh, especially with like rushing upside. This is a player like Justin Fields that we could envision having a thousand yard rushing seasons, mm-hmm. right? Having mm-hmm. 10 rushing touchdowns, being one of those guys who hopefully develops through the air, but gives you an incredible fantasy value through the ground. So I'm probably taking Anthony Richardson, um, maybe quarterback one in a one quarterback format. In, as towards, crazy as that t- sounds. Towards the, end of, towards the end of the second, just to get that upside, hey. Yeah, I would say mm-hmm. probably around like the 208 onwards. Okay. But again, team needs is a little bit more important when you're drafting a quarterback in a one quarterback format because no, for sure. they're not for sure. as valuable. They're not BPA. They're not best player available because it is not a valuable position compared to running backs and wide receivers and tight ends. So I think there's just so, so many ways, you know, dra- in a one quarterback league, you can go. You know, you, I think sure. of some of these older guys like, if I'm someone that has an Aaron Rodgers, someone that has, you know, a Dak, potentially, uh, um, yeah. you know, a Jimmy or a Ryan Tannehill that, and you think, oh, I still have a one quarterback, you know, I think I'm, I'll be okay for this one year. Like, I'm willing to take the shot, you know, even if it's like a a, a Matthew Stafford that's still kind of questionable. What's a Daniel? How about this? A Daniel Jones. If I have Daniel Jones, I'm willing to take. I feel like what I believe could be a security in a CJ or Bryce. I would disagree there because then, I, if, if, if I have Daniel Jones, I don't feel any need to address quarterback in a one quarterback format with what I've seen this year. No, exactly. And I'm, and I'm a Daniel Jones believer. I'm just saying like, I think I would, I would be, if I'm in the scenario, I'll say, okay, I'm at the two Oh five. What else do I need? I have all these quarterbacks or the, I mean, all these the, wide receivers, all these running backs. Yeah. Maybe I can get Depends CJ on- and Bryce who has a tremendously higher upside than someone like a Daniel do they? Jones. I'm saying do they though? Could could get there. We don't know yeah. that yet, but like I think maybe by the time next year, if CJ or in, in two years, CJ and Bryce will say, well, maybe I should have taken him in that one quarterback earlier. Maybe. They, I think that's the hardest part when I think of so the one quarterback. You guys in one quarterback formats are probably what in 10 man, 12 man leagues. Um quarterbacks not as valuable in super flex, easier to trade for. So I would just address other positions personally. I mean, I can think mm-hmm. of 20 quarterbacks that I'm probably okay with, and we, we're talking about a 12-man league. You know, if I have Kirk Cousins, I'm not addressing quarterback in a rookie draft. If I have Jared Goff, I'm probably not addressing quarterback in a rookie draft. Russell Wilson, Daniel Jones, Tua, Dak, Watson, you know, like the list goes on and on. Um, Geno Smith you could put in that category. So I don't know, man. I think I, at least in my perspective, I think for some people like the Kirks, the Genos, those guys – I think I'm more looking at the scenario in this situation and saying, okay, maybe I'll go younger and hope that that person's upside is going to be significantly higher. Cause we know that cap where the Kirk cousins, the Geno's, the Jared Gold. Right. I think there's in certain sense, and, and there's a window there. I think in my, that's why I'm, you have I'm to keep to in mind in one quarterback formats, quarterback is maybe the least valuable position for sure. And hear, it's the most that. valuable in super flex, but in one quarterback position, like think about it. You have your one quarterback, and you can't start him anywhere else. You can only start one quarterback. You have at least two or three running back spots, at least two or three wide receiver spots, and at least two or three flexes. So you can start maybe six running backs at a time. You can start maybe six wide receivers at a time. That's mm-hmm. why I find it mm-hmm. difficult when you know there's so many starting options to to value sure. quarterbacks here. For sure, I guess. And if I if I am going to value him, I'm going to try and shoot for the absolute stars like an Anthony yeah. Richardson. And if I don't. I'll go make a trade for one of these players who I could. I feel like I could get pretty easily with draft capital. But yeah. no, I get. It. I, I guess basically my conclusion is like I think there's a window for some of these players that I'll be willing to take a quarterback, um, based off of their upside and where we know their upside could be. Sure. Um, like I said, the Kirk Cousins, the Daniel Jones, the yeah, the Jared Goss. I think their upside. We know their upside. I think it's cap. And if I think a CJ can be a top ten quarterback or a Bryce could be a top ten quarterback, we believe and hope. I think I'll, I'll take a chance to maybe draft no, some of these guys. That's all I'm saying. I agree. All I'm saying is I don't think it's that difficult to trade for a top 10 quarterback. For sure. For sure. You know, in, in yeah. this format. So <laughs> yeah. that's Agreed. where I'm like, well, you could you could just address it in, in a trade if you need. But mm. yeah, no, it is it is definitely a different philosophy when it comes to one quarterback versus super flex. Yeah. I mean, you guys out there, let us know what you think. Yeah. Like, what would, where would you start to draft a quarterback? 
Some people are going to say you can draft him from the two one onwards. Some people are going to say I'm not drafting a quarterback in in a two round, you know, in a two round mock. So round, yeah. you guys let us know in the comments below. Do us a favor, drop a like to support the show. Comment down below uh, what you think about this mock. Who's too high? Who's too low? Subscribe if you like dynasty content, and we'll see you in the next video. Yo, what's good? Thanks wow. for watching. We got a lot more videos. A lot more. If you want more videos, watch now, it. You can also subscribe right now if you want to. You need to. And lastly, don't forget that you can sign up to support the show mm -hmm. and get exclusive content by going to patreon.com/fantasylandfam.